Hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Patrice. I am glad that you're here. Please look around. If you enjoyed that content, give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you would like to interact with me and other amazing crafters, be sure to check us out on Facebook. Our group is also Craftable Things. And for my returning subscribers, welcome back, y'all. So today's video, we are going to be making teacher tiles and mom tiles. Last year this became a very very popular project to do and I created so many teacher tiles for my fellow teachers. However I didn't really dive into the mom tile side of it but this year we are having a Mother's Day brunch. My family we are going to do a Mother's Day event and I want to give some mom tiles to my aunts and of course to my mom and to my grandma. So I will be working on some mom tiles. And these are the glass subway tiles. You can get these from Home Depot, from Lowe's. You can even get them from Amazon. Each tile ranges from about $2 to about $4 uh, per, for each tile. So it's not really expensive. This is the brand that I will be using today, Alita. I got these from Lowe's and I got three different sizes in this particular brand. These are white and sometimes the tiles can come in different colors like with the glass front but the back may be like a green or gray. It depends. I like how the white looks but whatever color you like, it, if it works for you, that is perfectly fine. And this particular size, I'm not sure what size this is. It's maybe like a two by, I think it's a two by six. These are two by sixes, okay? And so it comes like this, like a wall tile. Like you would really just take this out of the package and place it on your wall. So all you have to do for these is just peel this off of the mesh backing. There's a little mesh backing on these. I'm not sure if you guys can really see that, but all you have to do is peel it off. It comes off very easily, and you can make your your mom tile, teacher tile, dad tile, or grad tile. Whatever you choose to do, you can do it. Also, I have four by eights, and these you can. These are are pretty. There's enough space for you to put something nice on these. I think I'm going to use mom for these. So. This size I may use for the mom tiles. And then we also have the 3x12s that we are going to do. Okay, so for these, I am going to be using vinyl, and I will probably be cutting that with either the Cricut Joy or the Cricut Maker. Not exactly sure which one yet, but we will be cutting that with one of our Cricut machines. And also, what I like to do is use a little bit of the armor edge on the glass to kind of etch into the glass and then also mix that with a little bit of vinyl i think that looks very pretty and so we will be doing one of the tiles that way also all right so that's it for everything that we're going to need this is a very very simple project that you can do and it makes a wonderful gift let's get started Alright guys, so now we're in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to get ready to set up the template for these tiles. I'm simply going to click onto the square shape and unlock the sizing option so that way I can adjust it into a rectangle. And I will be creating all three of these tiles in this one canvas to avoid having to go back and forth. Once I finish doing this, I am just going to change the color of each of the squares to white so that I can kind of see a little bit um, how the colors would look and just to kind of match the tile. So now we are going to start with the mom tile because this one is the one that I'm going to need to make a stencil for to use with the etching cream. So we are just going to select text and I'm just going to type mom 
One tote type mom, I am going to just kind of size it to see how it will look within that 8x4 tile. And I think that is going to be a perfect fit inside that tile. And then I'm going to change it to another font. I want a font that's going to be kind of thick. And that way I think the, the etching will look really nice with a thicker or more bold font. And today I am going to be using Eagle Bold for this particular project. I started out using the stencil font, but I didn't like it much. So I'm using definitely going to stick with the Eagle Bold font. Now that I have the Eagle Bold font and mom how I want it to be, I am going to just, just size it within that tile, knowing that the tile is not as big as, um, it's not a true 8x4. And then now what I'm doing is I'm ungrouping the word so that way I can move the, the letters around and move them a little bit closer. And I love how this came out. And then I am going to go ahead and weld the word mom. Okay, so now that that has welded, we have now turned this into a shape. So it's like in any other program when you're creating outlines, you're turning words into shapes, which this is what we did so that we can be able to weld and slice and do other things with this particular text. So I think I'm going to make this tile for my mom and I think she'll like it. So I'm going to go ahead and type my name and my brother's name to go on top of the word mom. Now I'm going to get ready to change the font and I will be using Hello Honey for this tile and I like Hello Honey because it has so many glyphs and for those of you who don't know what glyphs are, those are sometimes some of the different shapes like hearts or butterflies that you may see in fonts and the little squiggly lines those are glyphs okay so i am just going to pull up my font i'm working in a macbook and in the font application it allows me to be able to drag and drop or copy and paste glyphs exactly where i want them to be within the text also if you are using a pc you will find your glyphs by opening or searching for your character map Okay, and several fonts have different glyphs or embellishments that you can add to the font itself. And that's what I'm doing here. That's how that looks for now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup this so that I can have it all as one. Once you start welding and things like that, and this goes for any other uh, program because when you make SVGs, even though you're using a letter, it actually turns it into a shape once you convert it into an SVG file. So that's what we're doing right now. So I'm going to ungroup and then the same way I moved the word mom, the letters in mom over, I'm going to do the same thing. I am not going to adjust them up any more. Like I'm not going to use the mouse to, to move it up or down or to the left or right. I'm using the arrows. And I'm doing that because I don't want it to really um, change at least how it, it looks. Now for some of them, once we're done, you'll see if I weld it and the weld turns the inside of the letters, uh, inside of the letters all black, that means that it's too close together. So that's what I will probably, you know, work around a little bit but I don't want to do too much and I'm just going to move you can select it all it's an easier way to get that done guys and then you can just move it over and that way you're not doing them one by one or taking too long to go over but some of these I do think I'm going to have to kind of inch it over some because they are just too close but it's okay and so you don't want any space between and as you can see some of that has like a little bit of space so I'm just going to hold my shift key and just kind of move it over a little uh -oh. this one is a little thin but so is the I love glitter it's not a very thick font or bold font 
So I'm just going to move these over together. So I've moved everything over. I'm just going to select all. I'm going to hit weld and hopefully everything looks it's everything is not how I want. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but those O's have um, closed in on me. So I need to undo and I need to undo the weld. All right. So that means that it is too close. All right. So something is touching too much. And so I will move over a little bit. I want it all to touch, but I don't want it to touch to where it is distorting the O's. It's a slight touch. Alright, so that should do it. Let's see. Weld. And that looks really good. Alright, so now all of my letters are how I like it and I'm very happy about it. So we are then going to now make an offset. Now, I may have to do a little bit of undoing depending on the actual offset itself. I am going to change the color of this to an orange. That's not what it's going to be because remember, this is going to be the etching. So, I am going to just kind of have this here. Not too much, but I do want it to kind of go the length of the... I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, like our names, just so that she can see our names. Not that she's going to forget our names, but you never know. All right, so here we go. And so I'm going to select both of these, and then I want to have it centered. And so you're going to go up to your line and just click center, and it is centered and that is how it's going to look especially with the offset too so i have both of these centered i'm going to then select the patrice and i'm going woodrow and this is taking a little bit of time and as you guys can see that offset is pretty thick we don't want a thick offset for this so i'm going to take this down and see just how small of an offset that I can get. Now it's up to you. I don't want a thick offset. You might want a thick offset. But I just want a nice outline around the the name for when we put it onto the, the tile. All right, and we are going to go just a little bit smaller. And it looks like this offset, I, I may want to undo it because I, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute just how it looks all right so let me undo even the sizing that I use and I'm going to change that I'm just undoing everything I don't want the weld so I'm going to kind of hold on so I'm going to make this a different color we're going to do that orange again and I'm going to move this over because I want to kind of size it while it's not welded. And I think I'll be happy with that. And now I'm going to take this over and then I'm going to do an offset because doing the offset when it's welded, it's a little bit challenging. I noticed, um, this isn't the first time that sometimes there's extra lines in there that I really don't want. And so before I weld it, I'm going to do the offset like this. And this looks super, super thin. And I think I'd like it, but I may up it to about 30. So I'm doing 0 0.030. And then I'm going to hit apply. So that offset is welded. All right. So I am going to select the offset and then I'm going to move the offset. So all I did right here is I went over to the side and I selected the offset um, in the panel bar. And then I moved that to the side because remember, I don't really want to move those letters around because those letters are not welded together yet. But that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and get those letters welded. So 
it becomes one. All right. And so now this is how it will look on that offset. And so I'm just going to leave this up here. I don't really need to have it um, on the tile as of yet. I am going to click on to mom and I'm going to leave it clicked, um, leave the offset selected. And then I am going to center. I want to make sure that I center it first. And I think I like it right there. I think I like it like that. And so I'm going to click slice. And so here are all of the slice results. All right. So you can really just, well, that's, it's clicking onto the mom. So I'm going to click on to all of the slice results you can delete because remember, we don't really even need the offset or anything anymore. Okay, so I'm going to delete all of that. And now we have our offset here inside. And we are just going to place that right there in the middle of the little one. Okay, and what I'm going to do next is I am going to move this out of the way. Because honestly, like having the squares here is just for me to be able to line it up. And then I am going to put another square. I'm going to put a square here. Let me just copy that. Copy. And then I'm going to paste another square. Move this back here. And then I'm going to create my stencil. All right. And so I need to move that to the back. And I'm going to create the stencil that I'm going to use. So I want to center, center that. So I'm going to align it and center it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change the, before I do that, I'm going to do copy. Y'all, it's so important sometimes just to copy what you have because anything can happen. So I'm going to then make sure this is centered. Did I already center it? I think I did. I'm going to center that. And then I am going to slice this. So I'm going to slice and then I'm going to move this out of the way. And this is going to be our etching on the tile. So that's slice. And then this will be our stencil. All right. It's a perfect size. It's a four by eight or eight by four. And we will be using this to put the etching cream here. All right. So we don't need that. And so it will kind of sort of give us this type of look. Let's send the other to the back. But of course, I'm not sure which tile, which color we're going to use, but I can delete that one. And this is our mom tile. And then we are going to do the teacher tile. And so the teacher tile is, and I'm going to hide this because I don't need it now. But this is just in case I need it. And then the teacher tile, we are going to do this all in vinyl. So I'm going to put teacher. And... We are going to size it, but it doesn't matter with us sizing it now because we don't really know, but I'm going to change the font. We're not doing Hello Honey. I am going to do a font. I love a child's year, and so I think we will do a child's year. So now we have teacher here. This is the font that we're going to use. And I think I am going to pull out out of glitter because I think I'm going to put a name across. So I'm just going to type here. I am going to type a name and I think I am going to use give this as a new teacher's appreciation gift to a new teacher that we have on our staff and I'm going to use I Love Glitter 
and of course we have to move it around the same way we did before so I'm just gonna do that and then I will get back. So I am done with designing the tiles. I just did something simple just so that you can see how it looks on the small one. I type my name and instead of using the O, I will be using an apple and we are going to cut that out and piece it together. And pretty much the same way I did the mom tile, I did the teacher tile, I used the offset as you guys can see, and I sliced the offset from the word teacher, and then I used I love glitter, the I love glitter font to write the teacher's name, and a few glyphs also. Alright, so I'm going to get ready to make this. I do want to just go ahead and hide these squares because we don't need the squares and we don't need those squares and I'm going to get ready to send this to the machine. All right, so this side, because we used the three by 12, of course, this is a little bit larger. So I am going to have to use the 12 by 24 mat. All right, so I'm gonna load this stuff up and get to cutting. All right, so now we are going to get ready to load in our vinyl. And this vinyl, I'm simply using this for the stencil for the tile that I will be using the armor edge on. And we are going to get ready to get this cutting. Alright guys, so I'm done cutting all of the vinyl. I didn't think you guys would want to see all of that. Now I'm just going to clean the tiles with some alcohol wipes and get them nice and clean and dry for when I get ready to put the vinyl on them. As y'all can see, I tried to sub onto the bottom of that tile and the sublimation process does take. I am going to try it on a smoother um, tile because that particular tile has the some adhesive because of the mesh backing that was on it but it does look like the backs can be sublimated so now I'm going to get ready to weed this stencil and remember when you're doing stencils you're doing reverse weeds so everything that you usually would weed you're not weeding that you are going to weed what you would usually be trying to place onto whatever it is that you are using. We are done weeding our stencil and it looks great. So now I'm just going to start weeding the other vinyl that we'll be using for these tiles and get that all prepared so that we can begin placing the vinyl onto the tiles. Alright guys, so I am done with weeding all of that vinyl and we are going to start with the mom tile. And so I have armor etch, like I said before, we were going to etch into the glass and I've already cleaned this off with a little bit of alcohol. And with this armor edge, you want to make sure that you are following all the safety precautions because it is very, very dangerous. It can burn you. It can ruin any furniture you have. So I do have a piece of um, parchment paper here and I have both of my gloves and I will not be taking my gloves off until I am done with rinsing this off. Okay, so make sure that you protect yourself and this armor edge you can get it from most craft stores you can even get it from Amazon and I will have a link to the items that I'm using in the description I am going to get ready to place the stencil on top of the tile and I'm just going to scrape the back and also the front just to make sure that I can take this off as easily as possible and you want to make sure that you don't really mess up the offset when you are peeling your backing away that's just what I'm trying to do just be a little more careful and to make sure that everything is intact and I'm just going to place this on to the tile and as you saw once it's on you better be prepared to to go through with it
take this off and usually if you have any space around your whatever it is that you're etching you can use some painter's tape to kind of block off the area so that nothing or none of the armor edge gets onto it but I'm just going to definitely make sure around the edges that the edges are down nice and tight and I like this because I have I do have a little bit of um, extra overage on the side where I can pull remember I said that the tiles are not exactly um, what the measurements are four by eight or eight by four but it's very close so that still gives us a little bit of extra but you want to make sure you are getting around those edges because you don't want anything to seep. You don't want any of this armor edge to go underneath your your cuts. Okay, so that is why I'm doing this just to make sure and see I see a little bubble and I'm going to make sure that's why it's very important to make sure you clean it and you don't have anything that could be that could prevent it from laying slap. Also, y'all, you don't have to do this armor etch. You can even just um, have it the regular way. I'm just doing this because I love how the armor etch looks on the glass. So I'm going to get ready and just coat this. I'm using a sponge today and I'm going to coat. I haven't used my armor etch in a minute, so it's kind of thick. And also I am using, um, I should have used a thinner or a, a smaller brush sponge but and I like to use a sponge because I don't like to have any of the bristles falling out so I'm just going to lightly just kind of make a coat in the glass and just pat pat it because you don't really want anything to go underneath the vinyl and that's another reason why you don't use the the paint brushes to do it because the bristles can get underneath the vinyl. I have had that happen to me when I was too lazy to go get the, the sponges. And you just keep patting. And so once you have this on, you're going to let it sit for about three minutes and then you will rinse it off in water. All right, guys, so while the Armor Edge is doing its magic and etching the glass, we are going to go ahead and start placing the other final onto the tiles. And I'm going to use the scraper. And it's really good to scrape the back and also the front so that you can avoid losing some of your vinyl peel how easy that was all right and then so i've already cleaned this off right. and then just gonna peel this off diagonally All right, and there we have our first part. And then I'm going to get our apple. Place the apple onto there. And of course you wanna do the same thing. Uh -oh, it's already coming off, so that's a good thing. So I'm gonna peel the back in the way. That looks easy. And I'm going to place the apple right here for our O. And then comes off easy peasy. And then we are going to put this on. Let's see if it comes up. Nope, that doesn't want to come off easy. So we are going to 
at the stem. It comes off now. It does. And then I'm going to place that right there. And then peel off. And then the same thing for the little leaf. Let's see if it comes off. It does. And this will go. be slanted just right. I could have slanted the stem a little bit more. But this will go just like that. Okay. So this one is all set. I am going to just put this on just a little bit. And look how beautiful. Came out really, really nice. All right, and so next we are going to do the three by 12. All right, so we are going to get ready to this teacher. All right, guys, so we have our transfer tape, and this is just regular transfer tape that we're using, okay? Oh, great. So I guess it was ready for me to put it down, huh? And it's not even straight, but I had it too close and I'm gonna go with it. I'm not gonna try to play around with it. I'll be able to get that T off fine. Let's go over the front part. And then we are going to peel it away and the T should come off, it should come off. I just gotta be careful with it. All right. And then now we are going to place this onto the tile and I am going to make sure, or at least try not to um, place it on crooked. Nope. I'm going to go over a little bit because I'm a little bit lost because of the T situation. But the T looks like it's going to hang over just a tad because I was too far over. And y'all, this final is so tough that once you get down, you are down. So guess what? We're going to have a little wrappage and that's perfectly fine. All right, so then I'm going to take this and I am going to pull it off. Uh oh, that one just ripped on me. Alright, and it looks good. Alright, so next we are going to put Miss Aniston's name on here and hopefully it'll be fine. Some of it ripped, but it's okay. I'm praying that it will come off just fine. We will see. I guess so now I'm going to peel the backing away from the vinyl and I'm going to try to line this up as best as possible because I want it to fit right inside of the offset that we created and this looks like it is in there as as good as possible. I like the placement of it. Of course, part of that glyph is hanging over. And so I'm just going to tuck that on the side like I did the T and just peel away slowly, especially with this, with this particular vinyl. And I want to make sure that everything is on there. I don't want to pull anything up. And sometimes it just takes a little bit of love and attention to make sure that that vinyl sticks the way that you want it to and we are all set and 
I really like how this looks. Of course, I am saving that transfer tape, y'all, because it is still perfectly usable. Do not throw away your transfer tape. You can use it for other projects. And I'm just salvaging it right now, making sure that it's it's free for the next project that I do. But look at this tile. Isn't it so cute? I hope that she likes it. All right, so now we are at the sink and the etching cream has stayed on this tile for about six to seven minutes and we are just going to rinse all that etching cream off. I'm taking my finger, of course, make sure you have on gloves, but I'm using my finger to kind of clear away all of that etching cream within the stencil. So next I'm going to dry the tile off as much as possible, make sure there's no water or very little water on the tile, and then I'm going to remove the vinyl from on the tile. Sometimes the vinyl may be stuck depending on what type of vinyl you're using. They do have stencil vinyl, however I have not been really successful with the stencil vinyl and this just works better for me. This is just regular Cricut vinyl that I use, but any vinyl would, would work for you. I'm also going to use my weeder a little bit to kind of get a little bit of the vinyl off, but be very careful if you use your, your weeder that you don't scratch up your tile. Alright, so now that I'm done peeling the vinyl off of the tile, look how beautiful that looks. I know you guys can see it. I am going to also get an alcohol wipe and clean the top off a little bit just to make sure there's nothing left on there. And if there's a little adhesive on there from the vinyl, I want to make sure that that all gets off. So that's what I'm going to do now and then I am going to get ready to place the vinyl decal with my name and my brother's name on top. Making sure that I place the decal on top of the offset that we created when we made the stencil for this tile and it's looking great. I think my mom is going to love this. All right, y'all, so we are all done with making our mom tiles and our teacher tiles and a bonus nameplate or desk plate for me. And everything came out wonderfully. My centering was off a little bit, but it still looks great. And so I have these plaque stands that I ordered from Amazon. And of course, I will be giving them along with the actual tile but this was the nameplate that I created look how cute very simple it does not take much to make this here was the teacher tile and we have the name and we use that Cricut offset we we listen if Cricut put that offset into Cricut design space the off, offset option it is meant for us to use it and use it a lot. So here we have the teacher tile and I can't wait to give this to her. I think she's going to like it. Well, I hope she likes it. The only thing is, I think I would get maybe like a wider acrylic stand for this long tile because this is pretty long. All right, and then we have our mom tile and I'm not sure if you guys can really see how that looks, but I'm trying to get that glare so you can see the edge in it. In person, it looks awesome. But maybe you can see, oh, you can see it a little bit closer now. Look how nice and classy that looks. Right, it looks classy. So I can't wait to give this to my mom. It almost looks 3D-ish. And yeah, everything turned out pretty, pretty nice. But that's going to be it for today. I am super excited. I have a few more of these that I need to make for teacher's appreciation and, of course, for Mother's Day. So I need to get to going. I need to get these done. But that's it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to like the video. Also, make sure if you are not a subscriber, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here. In addition, check us out on Facebook 
And by the way, I have a vlogging channel, Teach Craft Live. I talk about all different types of, of things, business and personal and teaching. And I do a lot of buy crafting hauls on that channel also. I would love if y'all would join me there too. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.